Hello, in this video I want to take you through the process of making a double-sided circuit board. I'll be using the software from Eagle, FlatCam, and then use the RBL to control my CNC. If you find this topic interesting, then this is certainly a video for you. Otherwise, you'll probably find this video pretty dry and boring. Anyway, so we're going to start here in Eagle. I have created my schematic. Uh, this is just a small VU meter driver uh, for an audio product. Uh, there's a different video on that. So after creating my schematic and choosing the components I want to use, I have created a board layout. So this is a small two layer board we have here. I see I have a few traces on the top side here. I have a few vias and some capacitors here and a terminal connection terminal here. And all the other components are on the back side. So the round shape here is a little bit unusual, but it will make no difference to uh, the steps I'm going to take here. Generally, when I create boards for uh, CNC engraving, I always use a ground plane on both sides. And we have to remember uh, it's not going to be any true hole plating. So components like these capacitors here, the true hole, uh, they will have no connection on the top side. So just keep that in mind when we do our layout here. But that's no different from if you're etching a double-sided board. So once we're happy with the board layout here, we will generate some Gerbers and drill files. Go in here in the CAM processor, open an open job here, and just take the this Gerber here. It might be different. I'm using an old version of Eagle. Uh, your version might be slightly different. And here we go. This will generate the Gerber files. I already have the file destination set here. We only really need the component side and the solder side because we're not going to do any silk screening or anything like that. Just click the process job. And then we need to generate some drill files. We open the Echelon job here. And same thing, process job. And that's it, then we're done in Eagle. Here we are on FlatCam. So note that the version I'm using is version 8.913 beta 64-bit. Uh, other versions might behave differently. And also keep in mind that in FlatCam everything I do is in metric. So that means all measurements are going to be in millimeters and feed rates are going to be in millimeters per minute. So we start by opening our Gerber files. Just click this icon over here. We select the component layer and the solder side layer and just click open. And here we can see representation of the two layers. And then we need our drill file as well. So before we open the drill file, this I think depends on your version of Eagle, but if you go in here and say edit, then note there's a percentage sign up here. Uh, we need to delete that if it's present and then just save it and then click open here. Otherwise the drill file will not be read correctly by FlatCam. So at this point I recommend having a good look at the two layers and just to make sure everything looks correctly and there are no mistakes or anything. Once you're happy everything looks correctly, uh, go in Tools here and then click on the two-sided PCB here. It will allow us to mirror the traces and drills for the back side of the circuit board. And first we make sure what axis we want to mirror around. So x-axis, well, it's going to be like here, right? So when we flip over the board for machining, we have to keep that in mind. And then we select here, we want the solder side to be mirrored. And then we want the drill files to be mirrored as well. Then we need to add some reference points. So we need to drill some holes in the raw circuit board we can use for alignment. And the easiest way to do it is just to hold down shift. You click where you want the hole. So one thing I recommend, you need to keep the point at 0, 0.0 clear because that's where the CNC is going to start all the operations. So uh, do not put your alignment holes anywhere near 0, 0.0. 
and we're going to be using some pins so we also want to make sure that the cnc is not going to run into our alignment pins so i recommend keeping them outside for example over here somewhere so if i click shift here and then i click and then i click add over here it's going to add one of holes and then we need to do the same over here on the other side hold down shift click the mouse button and click add so now we have two coordinates here and we click the create Exelon object. Now you can see it automatically mirrors and it creates now four alignment reference holes here. And if we click back on the project tab here, we can see it created a drill file here called alignment drills. So since this is going to be our first machining operation, I'm just going to name this one to keep track on it and we select this alignment drills here and click the selected tab over here then we can see it's set up to drill four 1.5 millimeter holes 2.5 millimeter deep but i want them to be a bit deeper here for our alignment pins so i think six millimeters and c travel is fine one millimeter tool change that yeah, is fine feed rate Crunch, yeah, it's fine. And make sure the post processor is set to GBRL, just to make sure we don't run into any compatibility issues with the G code. And then we can just click create G code. And we can see here, it draws what the G code is gonna be like and the movement. So you see it starts down here at 0, 0.0, and then it just goes around and drills these four holes. And then we can say save here. And we save it as the first CNC file. And then we can click back on the project tab here. So the next operation we will be preparing is the engraving of the component layer on the top side of the circuit board. So we select the component here and click select it. So the first number here is the tool diameter. I do use a 0.1 millimeter tool, at least that's what it's advertised as, but I use set it as 0.12 millimeter. Then we have number of passes. I usually set this to four. It is basically how many times it's going to go through maximum in each of the traces it needs to engrave. Uh, it will be visible later. And then we have an overlap here. So this is a bit strange because it's actually like a percentage. So 15 would be 15%. But actually, I like to set this to a little bit higher, uh, 25. And it's very important to set this to combine. Otherwise, it will generate separate files for each four passes here. And that's it. We can just click full geo here. And what you can see over here, so we get this red here. You can see these are the four passes it's going to take. And you can see here what it's going to look like so it's a good idea to have a have a look and see everything looks okay again uh, if you're happy with it we can go on so here we will set the cut depth it's certainly not going to be two millimeters we need something like 0 0.05 millimeters multi-depth no we don't need that here uh, c travel one millimeter yeah it's good Tool change, we don't really need that. Feed rate, uh, we probably want to set that a bit higher, maybe around 80. It depends on how much of a hurry you're in. I think around 80 to 100 works well, at least on my CNC. Plunge rate, we can set a little bit higher, maybe set 150. And again, post processor, GRBL, make sure it's compatible. And then we just click generate. That's it. And then we can click to save the CNC file. So I can now name this number two. So there's no confusion what order they're going to be processed in. Then we can click back on the project tab. And the next step will be engraving the solder side or the bottom side of the circuit board. So I'm just going to run through that really quickly. Uh, it's exactly the same steps as we just did for the component side. Uh, 
And again, we go back to the project tab. Now it's time to do the drill files. And we click the drill file here and click select the tab. And we can see here a list of all the holes we need to drill on the board and the sizes of the drills. First we have the drill depth, so it's set to two and a half millimeters, so that's probably a reasonable number. I'll be using a 1.6 millimeter FR4 board for these circuit boards here. And travel one millimeter, sounds good. Tool chain, so yeah, we do need tool chains because we'll need to change the drill bits. And the tool chain's height here, 30 millimeters is good. Plunge with the drill. 60 millimeters per minute, yeah, it sounds good. Spindle speed, yeah, it's good. Post processor looks good. And we can click create G code. And again, just click the save here. And we'll name this number four. And save that. So the last operation we need to do is cutting out the actual board. There's a tool here called cut out PCB and first we select the object. I guess we should use the solder side object here. Tool diameter. So the cutout tool I'm using is a 2.4 millimeters. These two, yeah, just ignore them. And then usually I use the manual here. Uh, again, select the solder side because by this point we already flipped the circuit board and just say generate geometry and see it creates a tool path on the outside here and then we go back on the project tab again and we select this geometry here it's already selected and see the tool is 2.4 millimeters the depth we want to cut two millimeters, that sounds reasonable with a 1.6 millimeter board. And in this case, I do want to do a multi depth pass. So I want to do half a millimeter at a time. My spindle is not very powerful. So this works well on my CNC. It might be different for yours. Maybe you can do everything in one pass. Tool chains don't need that. Feed rate, I'm not gonna go too fast here. 50 millimeters per minute is probably fine. Again, GRBL post processor, and we can click generate. And you can see here the blue generates the tool path. Click save again, and this is our last step. So give it number five, and that's it. We're done in FlatCam. And for those interested, this is what my mini benchtop CNC machine looks like. It's nothing special. I bought it second hand quite a few years ago for a few hundred dollars. I don't think it's seen much use, but I had to take it all apart because the alignment of all the linear rails was really, really horrible. Anyway, it's working good now. So for this board, I'll be using a piece of this little FR4 board here. Uh, it's 1.6 millimeters thick, double sided, and I'm just gonna stick it to my board here. So I'll use some some double sided tape. You see here, this like really thin double sided tape. Uh, so let me just go ahead and do that. For the zero sensing, I usually just solder a resistor onto a small corner of the board here. Just like this. Just to make sure I have something I can grab onto uh, with a solid connection. So I put in a 1.5 millimeter drill bit and I zeroed out the position so we can get started with machining. So I use a piece of software called Candle to control my CNC. 
uh, I think version 1.17. So first step will be opening our files and we start with the alignment drills. And you can see it here, very, very simple job. So I think we just get started. And that's it, the first part of the job is done. And time to open the second file, top side engraving. So I have switched the tool in my CNC to a V-bit 30 degrees, uh, 0.1 millimeter. And before we can start the job, we need to do a height map. And click create here. And first we need a size to match the size of our board here. I'm just gonna click auto. It will auto size it. Currently, the, it's set to a grid of five times five. That's a little bit too much for this small board we're making here. I'll just set that to three times three. It's going to probe one, two, three, and three here. So we'll get nine points. Uh, we can see here. And I'll go ahead and start the probing. It's done and you can see we now have our height map here these are the points that were measured during the probing and then we just click edit mode here and click use height map then it will automatically apply it for when we start engraving and then we just click here to start the job That's it, the top side is done. And we can flip the board over. I have flipped the board over and I've added the small alignment pins in the holes we drilled earlier and we're ready to engrave the bottom side of the board. We can now load the file for engraving the bottom side. Number three is all assigned here. And it will be exactly the same steps as we just did for the top side. So I'm just going to run through it really quickly. I first create a height map and then I'll just start the engraving.
and it's time to drill some holes. So let's open the file here. And if we scroll down here a bit, we can see, well, the first drill size is 0.6 millimeters. Since there will be no true hole plating, I generally go 0.1 millimeters smaller than the specified size because I like the holes to be as snug as possible. I've mounted the first drill bit. Uh, I'll say with these small drill bits, it's a good idea to have a lot of spares because if you're using the last bit of a specific size, then it's pretty much guaranteed to break the first time you use it. However, if you have plenty of spares, the first one will likely last forever. Time to change to the next size. And that's it, we're done drilling, now we just need to cut out the board. And I'll open the last file here, so we can do the cutout of the board. So just a quick comment on routing FR4 boards. Uh, it tends to generate some very harmful dust. Uh, it can be very bad for you to breed that dust. Engraving isn't bad, it only takes the copper layer and a little bit of the epoxy. Drilling isn't so bad either because it tends to generate larger particles. But once we start routing, it will generate some really nasty dust. So the way I deal with this is I spray a little bit of water on the bit while it's running and I will just turn the dust into mud instead of getting it into the air. Okay, that's it. We're ready to go. That's it, we're done. We just need to do a little bit of cleaning and we see how the result turned out. And here you can see the final result. So this is after I clean it with some scotch pad 
just to get the copper clean and get rid of any burrs. I had a little bit of burrs left, but nothing serious. Uh, I recommend only using scotch pad to clean your boards. Uh, don't use sandpaper, uh, you're going to regret it. So I think they turned out pretty well. Uh, it's reasonably good quality. Keep in mind these are only 34 millimeters in diameter and the smallest traces are something like 12 mils. Oh, the total machining time I think was around 45 minutes, but 95% of that time is just waiting for the CNC machine to finish and the rest is just clicking buttons and changing tools in the CNC. I'll have a new video up in a few days where you can see the board in action. And in general I would say making your own boards is not to save money. Uh, it's much cheaper to use manufacturers these days. You can get like 10 prototype boards for what five ten dollars or something like that but the downside is you have to wait three weeks for them to arrive in my case i do a lot of one-off projects and it's very convenient you can go from schematic to a finished board within a few hours and if you make some design errors or you want to make a few little changes uh, it's no problem you can just make a new board in a few hours anyway i hope you found this guide useful and interesting so leave a comment, give a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.